Today we're going to talk about significant figures. What are significant figures? They're digits within a number that um, are known to a certain degree of confidence. So the more significant figures, the more confident you are in the number. So let's start with a couple of examples. If I write this value, we have zeros to the left, which are called leading zeros, and these don't count towards the significant figure. If anything, they're placeholders. And when we get to our first non-zero number, we can say that this is significant. So this value has one significant figure, or one sig fig. What about another example? 0 0.0500. Now we have leading zeros and we have trailing zeros. The leading zeros, again, they don't count, and we move along across the number until we get to our first non-zero number. And then we actually start counting the zeros to the right. So in this case, we have three sig figs. What about this one? Okay, so now we have a number of zeros. We have leading zeros, we have zeros in the middle, and we have trailing zeros. The rule of thumb is, again, the leading zeros do not count. We get to our first non-zero number, and every digit after that, including the zeros, count. So this one has four sig figs. What about this number? Now, only trailing zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sig figs. What about a whole number? So, whole numbers can be ambiguous. If I say 2400, is the value exactly 2400 or is it approximately 2400? Without a decimal place, we can only, with confidence, say that this value has two sig figs because there's no decimal place. All right, if I say it is 2400 and I'm confident in that value, we can now say it has four sig figs because now it has a decimal place. When we're considering significant figures in um, a calculation, we have a couple of different rules. When we talk about addition and subtraction, we actually look at the number of decimal places. And when we talk about multiplication and division, we talk about significant figures. So let's start with addition and subtraction. So your answer will depend on the number of decimal places um, that are the smallest. So if we look at 4.00 and 1.090, we have two decimal places here, we have three decimal places here. So our answer can only have two decimal places. So our answer in this case would be 5.09. Now our next example, we have 411, which is a whole number. We don't have any decimal places and we have a very small number that is decimal places only, only, so three decimal places. So if we take into consideration the rule, we have to have an answer that has no decimal places. So in this case, our answer would be 411. Now, when we're talking about multiplication and division, it's the least number of sig figs that we have to take into consideration. So if we look here, we have 38.45 and we have 104.38. This one has four sig figs. This number has five sig figs. So our answer can only have four sig figs. If I did this calculation with my calculator, I would end up with 4013.411, etc. We would not incorporate that because now we can only consider the four sig figs in our answer. Our next example, 750 times 11.250. Now remember, the rule around decimal places, 
This is a whole number. It does not have any decimal places. So how many sig figs is this? It is only two. One, two. And this value has five. How many does our answer require? Only two. So our answer in this case would be 8,400. Or we could say 8.4 times 10 to the 3. But if you throw this value into your calculator, you're going to have a value of 8,437.5. Why did I round it up to that? Because this value only has two sig figs. So now let's talk about uh, combination calculations. In parentheses here, we have a multiplication followed by an addition. So if you recall, multiplication and division goes by the least number of sig figs. So if I look at this, 13.45 has four significant figures. 9.83, three significant figures. If I multiply those two together, my answer has to have no more than three significant figures. So here is my answer if I just calculate the entire thing in my calculator. But if I look at my significant figures, it's 132. So we can't factor any of that in. Now I add that to 15.00. Addition and subtraction is the least number of decimal places. I have no decimal places adding a number with two decimal places. So my answer can have no decimal places. So if I did all of this, plugged it into my calculator, my final answer would be this. No decimal places, three significant figures is my final answer. 147 is how I would report it. Now let's look on this side. In parentheses, we have 18.23 plus 0 0.457, least number of decimal places. Here we have two decimal places, and here we have three decimal places. So if I take that value, I get, and plug it into my calculator, I get 18.687. I can't factor in the 7. I need to have two decimal places, so my answer is 18.68. Now, in this calculation, I now divide by 0 0.012. Division, multiplication, least number of sig figs, so how many sig figs is this? We don't factor in the leading zeros, just these, so two significant figures. Now, my answer cannot have more than two significant figures. I plug all of this into my calculator, I get 1,557.25, and I have to convert that to two significant figures. I can report it as 1,600 or I can put it into scientific notation as 1.6 times 10 to the 3.